This is a 132nd session of the morning devotion. And we're starting with uh, hymn 173, Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of the dungeon fire and salt. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy when we hear that glorious word. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee that our father shed in prison dark we're still in heart unconscious free how sweet will be their children's fate if they like them could die for thee fate of our father's holy fate we will be true to the dead fate of our fathers we we strive to win all nations unto thee and through the truth that comes from god Mankind shall then be truly free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to the dead. Faith of our fathers, we we love both friend and foe in all our strife and preach thee to us love know how by kindly words and virtuous life faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to thee till that we want to thank the almighty father the god who made the heavens and earth who uh, by his mercy and his uh, uh, kindness has uh, carried us through the weekend and has brought us into a new week trusting in his mercy trusting in his grace trusting in his uh, compassion that uh, does not fail we want to represent ourselves again to him let us pray our god and our father we thank you again this morning uh, we have uh, woken up into the mercy of god and uh, we have come so we can draw grace strength and the help from god but before then, Lord, we want to say thank you for the things we were taught this weekend. Thank you because of the inspiration we drew as we fellowshiped with one another. Thank you because of uh, the understanding that the Almighty God created, even in our heart and in our spirit, even previous Sunday, as to the importance of uh, our coming together in the house of God and making us to know that uh, we cannot go from our homes uh, to heaven. Now, if we must need go to heaven, then we need one another. We need uh, uh, fellowshipping with one another, provoking one another in love, and that can only be done as we come together. So we thank you, Father, for the, the lessons we learned. And for the adjustments we have made now lord we've come to commit this day into your hand and we want to ask lord since you are the one that declared the end from the beginning from the ancient time the things that are not yet done declaring that your counsel shall stand now this morning our god and our father 
we entrust our lives into your hand. We entrust everything that has to do with us into your hand with assurance that whatsoever is committed into your care is kept. Jesus Christ said, My Father that gave them to me, he is stronger than them all. And none is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Father, we are trusting that this week we shall be protected, we shall be preserved, we shall be kept. Our going out, Lord, shall be blessed this week. Our coming out back equally shall be blessed. Everything about us this week, eternal Father, shall experience the blessings of God, the favor of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God. Everything, great Father in heaven, that uh, we shall experience this week shall be things that we promote the testimony of the, of the lost name. Thank you, blessed Father. By our way of living this week, men shall praise God. Father, we are promising that this week we are not going to cause embarrassment. Neither are we going to scandalize the church and scandalize the faith and scandalize the truth. Thank you, Father, as we depend completely and totally on your mercy and grace. So let the grace of God carry us through this week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Father, we commit all the people that will be making journey this week. Blessed Father, those that will be traveling by road or those that will be flying, whatever means, Lord, of our traveling this week. Father, we commit into your hand, asking the Lord of glory, who he taught to accept us. We continue to help us. Father, we are believing in you that uh, we shall be remembered that this month of ember, Father, it shall be a month of our being remembered. We shall experience things, God Almighty, that uh, we will remember for too long in our lives. For the glory of your name, in Jesus' name, and for the advancement of the church, be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Holy Spirit, we're asking you that uh, you talk to us, you direct us, you guide us, you instruct us in the way we should go today, so that at the end of this day, we will not have any reason to regret, rather when we see reasons to appreciate you and to glorify you. Once again, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, this morning we are discussing a very important subject matter, and that is about uh, uh, keeping the faith. So we will be discussing this morning preserving the faith. In other words, keeping the faith. It is important that uh, we know that uh, what the faith is all about is about the totality of uh, what Jesus Christ taught and what Jesus Christ uh, practiced. That is what we call the faith. And that is equally what is known as the faith of our fathers. The things that Jesus Christ taught and practiced and what the apostles learned from Christ and which they taught as well as practiced in their lives. When you put them together, that is what is known as the Christian faith. The Christian faith, their experiences and their lifestyle and what they believe, put them together is called the faith that we are called to preserve. To preserve rather. We are called to keep. We are called to ensure that it's not lost. Now, if one is asked to keep a thing, it means that there is danger of that thing being lost. If one is asked to preserve a thing, it means that there is danger of that thing not being preserved. So, the fact that uh, the faith is to be kept is uh, suggesting that the faith can be lost, the faith can uh, be missed, the, the faith can slip out of our hands, we can be in church and going to church, but the faith has been lost. So can we read together Second Timothy chapter 4, and we are taking uh, two verses, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, 
I have kept the faith. Hence, for there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Paul spoke about uh, fighting a good fight and finishing his course and keeping the faith. Now, what that means is that the faith is under attack. What that means is that the faith is under a very strong contention. That was why Paul has to fight in order to keep the faith. He has to fight in order to finish the course. He had to go extra mile in order to keep the faith. Now, our text, where we read now, is a testimony of uh, Apostle Paul describing his experience in the Christian walk as a fight to keep the faith. The summary of Apostle Paul's uh, Christian walk is that I fought a good fight and um, I finished my course. I kept the faith. He used three statements or three uh, three statements to summarize his uh, Christian walk. Number one, I fought a good fight. He described Christian walk as a fight, uh, as a, a cause, as a vocation that had great opposition. He also describes a Christian race as a, a cause, one is undertaken that requires carefulness to be able to finish. He so said, I finish, and then I have kept the faith. He described his Christian work as a faith that demands being kept. When you look through what Apostle Paul went through, uh, you will actually agree that it was, it was a real fight. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and um, can we read verse uh, 23 and this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that ye may obtain Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Can you see the fighting again? And you see the running again? But I keep on that my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be uh, cast away. So Paul described his Christian uh, faith and Christian work as a race that many people are, are running. And then some people will run aimlessly, but for him he said, I have a target. I was not running uh, aimlessly. And then he spoke about striving, striving. And then he spoke about obtaining a crown. And he mentioned about steps he took, sacrifices he made, things he gave up in order, and things he suffered. If we go to read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and from verse 18 to the last verse, 33, and then in chapter 12, you will see the things that Apostle Paul suffered. Chapter 4 also of 2 Corinthians, when you read from verse 10 to verse 18, you see the list of what Paul went through in order to preserve the faith. So you find out that keeping of our Christian faith, especially these days of uh, compromise, these days of uh, backsliding, these days of uh, so many look alike, like faith. So many things that look like faith, they look like truth, and they look like uh, uh, approved by God, but not really approved by God. They are there being dangled to us, 
We need to be very careful. We need to be very diligent. We need to be methodical. We, meet, we need to be very detailed if we must not miss the mark. If we will not get to come to an, a, a, point, a, a point in our lives and we have missed it, uh, when we'll be thinking we are in faith, when we're already out of the faith. There are so many things that are out there waiting for you and waiting for me on a daily note to take us out of faith, to make us lose the faith. That is why the Word of God instructs that we should examine ourselves constantly to ensure that we are in the faith. Can we read First Timothy chapter 6, 11 and 12? But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, for you to keep the faith, there are things that you need to flee from as a child of God, and the list is there. Now, the things that are stated from 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 1 to 10, which includes love of money and a quest to become rich, all of these are included in the things a child of God have to flee from. Now this other day, we took time to show us list of things that we have to run away from. And uh, the, in this list, you find fornication is in the, at, at the top of the list of things that believers are to run away from. Now it says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things, and then he now show what to follow and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now one requires to follow the things that the word of God have, or has instructed to be followed if the fight must be a good fight. And if faith must be kept, then we have to flee things that we should flee and follow things we should follow and then engage in battle the things we should engage in battle. Now, verse 12 of chapter 6 of 1 Timothy. For the good fight, the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life should always be our target. We should always be conscious of uh, eternal life. When eternity slips off somebody's mind, he can do anything. What we serve as a check what we serve as a, a monitor, what we serve as a, a controller of your life is uh, always retaining in your conscience the eternal life, that eternity is there. When we keep eternity always in view, it will control our confession, it will control our profession, it will control our style of life. But when we uh, move eternity in our view, and then other things now, other things take over our view. Other things now begin to overwhelm us. We are, uh, the, we are on our way out of uh, the faith. And surely the battle will be lost. The faith will be lost. Unfortunately, many people have lost the faith. Now, we have the testimonies of Apostle Paul. And uh, Apostle Paul in this uh, chapter gave a testimony and uh, he has testimonies that we can learn from that it helped him to preserve the faith now in one of the testimonies he gave is found in verse 6 of 2 Timothy chapter 4 for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand now that is his testimony, testimony of readiness always, testimony of being prepared to be offered. He was ready to die for what he believed. He was ready to be sacrificed for what he stood for. And so if we must keep the faith, that readiness must be there. 
And that readiness does not just come anyhow. That readiness comes from genuine experience and always remaining in tune with God, in tune with eternity. Never lose sight of eternity. If you do, you will soon be out of the race. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 12 to 15, you hear the testimony of Peter. What kept Peter in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my disease, after my departure, after my death, to have these things always in remembrance. Can you see Peter? Peter was testifying of his readiness to go. Every believer should be ready uh, daily. Nobody knows when he is going. Nobody knows when the trumpet will sound. That is why taking chances is uh, is a dangerous enterprise, a dangerous uh, situation. But you know that uh, for one to always be prepared, for one to be always be ready to offer, to be offered and to go, one has to have a genuine experience. The experience that Apostle Paul had and that of Peter uh, went a long way to help them. Look at verse 16 of uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We followed not fables, cock and bull stories. When we make known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw what happened at the Mount of Transfiguration. We heard his voice. We saw the cloud. We witnessed. We were eyewitnesses. So you find out that when people have genuine experience like apostle paul like um, uh, peter and those early church he found that this genuine experience will lead them to being prepared always and make them make them ready to even die for what they believe now today the problem we have today is that so many people are in the church so many people are in the ministry. So many people are even on the pulpit who have not gotten the experience. Some have the genuine experience, but with time, as we're always told by our Father in the Lord, the passage of time, passage of time can, can affect somebody's relationship with God. And it does. Can we read Philippians chapter 1 and verse verse? 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation uh, through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. This uh, was a, a testimony of a man that had a genuine encounter, genuine experience, genuinely met with God. Now let me ask you, before you begin to talk about, claiming about being a, a Christian, being born again, and being a watchman, what is the testimony of your experience? When did you encounter Christ? Now, if you have encountered Christ, now, the life you are living now, the language you are speaking now, the things you are thinking now, the things you allow now in your life, do they totally agree with the life of a Christian as we know? If any man is in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away, all things have become new. As we saw in the lives of the people who have come before us, who maintained a relationship with God, who were called Christians, 
Can you say that uh, you are still retaining such lifestyle if you are not? Only just because you just received Jesus and then you had changed, but now you have returned to square one. What that is saying is that you have uh, left off and there is a need to return. Now in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. They received salvation and they were kept in the faith. They kept the experience. Now you cannot tell me you are keeping the faith when you have returned to drinking, when you have returned to lusting, when you have returned to, to murmuring, when you have returned to all of those things you left. No, you cannot be keeping faith and you are now living the life you left before. It does not work together. Now, there is another second testimony of Apostle Paul is that he finished his assignment. Apostle Paul said, I finished. And my prayer for you and my, for myself is that together we should finish. He said, verse 7 of first, uh, Second Timothy and uh, chapter 4. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, I fought. Testimony, I fought. And that fight is a good fight. I didn't lose. I didn't compromise. I was not, uh, I, I, I did not scandalize the church. I did not bring shame to the gospel. Shame to the name of the Lord Jesus. I remain firm. I remain focused. I remain steady. That's a testimony. And I finished my course. I finished my assignment. Well, that's poor testimony. Jesus Christ, when he was here, his target was finishing. We find him saying in John chapter 4, verse 31, and then in John chapter 9, and verse, uh, verse 4, we find him talking about finishing. Can we read uh, chapter 9? Of John and verse 4 I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can walk that was Jesus target it was he was set to do the work and to finish the work can we read chapter 4 of John and um, verse 31 in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him saying master each but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Had any man brought Jesus or to, brought him or to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And he finished, he finished. While he was hanging on the cross, he, he said, I thirst, I am thirsty. And then and they went and brought the sour vinegar. And once they gave him the vinegar, and he took it, and uh, he looked through the list of what he was asked to do, and uh, he knew that uh, the last thing was done. Then he said, it is finished. So he finished well. He gave up the ghost, and is now seated at the right hand of glory, waiting for those who will also fight and finish. Paul finished, and he's seated. Uh, he's also now receiving the, the reward is now enjoying the crown of righteousness because he finished in righteousness and uh, can we read the as of apostle chapter 20 and verse 23 and 24 say that the holy ghost witness in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me paul was saying that wherever he went wherever he went the holy spirit was uh, telling him afflictions and prison imprisonment was where I waiting for him. But he said, none of these things moved me, neither count I my life there unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And he finished indeed my course and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now that is uh, his target. That was his focus. I want to finish this Christian race without bringing shame to the gospel. I also want to finish the assignment, the project, the commitment uh, that God has put into my hand, ensuring that everything is finished. So starting 
a, a good thing uh, is very easy but finishing well finishing that good thing starting christian race who've seen so many who started well who started in faith who taught the bible better than we are doing and uh, who we can conclude that they knew god more than us but we find them now out of faith we find them now singing songs we can't understand we find them now speaking language we cannot understand we find them now practicing doctrines we cannot understand and so that is it uh, we, we don't need to go far we don't need to look far to see such people we have them among us they were once with us but now they are not with us again some of them were forced to 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 use the word of knowledge some of them were mighty miracle workers but because they were careless because they, they, they didn't guard against certain things they couldn't finish they are now where they are only God knows whether we will together meet at last Judas and Demas and Saul and Samson the man of God from Judah and many others even of in the Bible days in the New Testament they all started well but could not finish well they started fine but with time with time and uh, the, because of uh, carelessness and because of some tendencies that uh, they had in them they couldn't address it they were unable to finish well Judas was a thief before he encountered Jesus. He came into the ministry. He didn't address the tendency. Moses was a, a man that had was quick tempered. That was there. He came in contact with the Lord. He couldn't address it. And Samson could not address uh, the lust of the flesh and all of that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love god wants us now that we have started well he wants us to continue to the end that uh, we can uh, test our testimony can be proven now in romans chapter 9 and verse 28 romans the ninth chapter can we read verse 28 for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will leave the Lord make upon the earth. God is interested in finishers. It's God is interested in people finishing the work. In John chapter 5, can we read verse 36 of John chapter 5? John chapter 5 verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father had given me to finish, the work the Father gave me to finish, the same work that I do, be a witness of me that the Father has sent me, given to finish, given a work to finish, given a work to finish. So the Christian faith you have entered is not something that you will do today and tomorrow. Uh, we, we turn back and then when we turn and God will still be counting for us no if you look back like the Lord Lord's wife she became a pillar of salt you become a pillar of salt at the point where you stop being mindful of uh, following God uh, diligently it is at that point that uh, uh, that uh, God withdraws himself if the righteous man turns away from his righteousness if the obedient person and committed person and the honest person and disciplined person at a point in his life decides to do otherwise from that point he has missed God that is the God we serve he wants us to start well and to finish well in chapter 14 of Luke 28 to 30 that is uh, a question uh, about uh, a man that wants to build. He wants to build. Does he not sit down and count what it will cost him so that he'll be able to finish what he has started to build? So then, it is important that uh, we follow 
this truth of uh, the the living God. Can we read the uh, chapter fourteen? Chapter fourteen of uh, Luke, and let's read from verse twenty-eight. For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he had a sufficient to finish it? The Christian race is like building a tower. And Jesus Christ said, and working for God is like building a tower. Now he said, who uh, we want to uh, engage in building a tower and will not sit down to count the cost. So following Jesus and then working for Jesus, it requires that we sit down and uh, ask ourselves, what do I want to have at last? In this issue of Christian race, do I want to spend eternity with God at last or what do I want? That The answer you give to that question will determine how you will live your Christian life. Will determine whether you will be satisfied with the way you are serving God now and then I make a, or you will be dissatisfied and then I look and make for adjustment. Verse 29, let's happily after he had laid the foundation without sitting down and casting the and counting the cost and is not able to finish it, all that behold, he began to mock at him because he didn't sit down, because he didn't draw his plan, because he didn't have a target. Now, halfway, he will veer off. Verse 30, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish, began to run the race, but halfway he dropped. So God Almighty we serve is interested both from the Old Testament and in the New Testament in our finishing the race and doing the work of the ministry uh, totally and completely. That is uh, the God we serve. He's interested in how you finish. It is interested in everything about your beginning through to the end. Can we read Chapter 16, uh, chapter 6 rather, of uh, Genesis and verse 16. A window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. Verse 22. Thus did know according to all that God commanded him, so did he. He finished the work of the building the ark as God commanded. He started, he didn't stop halfway, and he made sure that everything was set in order. Christianity is not, uh, uh, is not a religion of, uh, of disorderliness. It demands order. It demands carefulness. It demands uh, following instructions. Chapter 40 of Exodus can we read verse 33? Exodus 40 and verse 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Moses finished the project. Now we sing, I'm a divine project. And uh, God will not abandon me until he finishes his work in me. Now you are a project. God does not abandon his project. But then... If we abandon him, surely there's nothing he can do. In 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 9, can we read verse 1? And then I join it with verse 25. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord, finished the house building, and the Lord and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, he finished. It was then that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. God appeared when he has finished accordingly, when he has finished properly. Verse 25, And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar which he had built unto the Lord. And he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord. So he finished the house. The question is, are you... What kind of mind are you putting on? Do you put on the mind of people that want to finish? Nehemiah finished the project given to him. Jesus Christ also finished 
he was uh, bent on finishing he had his eyes on finishing well we are not just uh, talking about finishing somebody can finish but didn't finish well somebody can be finished somebody can be finished somebody grace can finish after all uh, something finished but he didn't finish well so finished but he didn't finish well and uh, and uh, judas finished but he didn't finish well demons finished but he didn't finish well rather they were finished the grace of god finished and uh, and so on and so forth john chapter 17 verse 4 i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work without gave me to do can you see that now the finishing of the work brought glory to god and not shame there are people that are finished with the vision there are people that were once with us in the ministry and they are now finished with a watchman what they, they are finished with a watchman now did they finish in glory no they are finished with the vision they are into some other 10 else chapter 19 and verse 30 chapter 19 verse 30 the people used to admire the vision before they used to run with the vision but now they are finished with it but the vision has is there to be finished there are people that are there also they used to be very zealous they used to pursue evangelism they used to do follow-up and uh, anything you call they are out for it and they are they are, they are finished they are no longer getting involved they are no longer you call them for this they are not there you call them for that they are not there but these were people that were running with a vision before we can say they are finished but the vision has not finished chapter 19 verse 30 of john when jesus therefore had received the vinegar the last thing to be received the last thing to be done he said it is finished when jesus christ received the last thing that he knew that was expected to be done and then he, the ministry is concluded that was when he announced he has finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost that was when he gave up the ghost he finished well as chapter 21 and verse 7 so a prayer is that you don't give up the ghost you don't give up the holy spirit you don't give up the ministry jesus did not give up he didn't give up he finished before giving up many people have given up the ghost have given up the vision have given up their their commitment have given up their righteousness have given up their diligence have given up their sacrificial living yet their work has not finished before jesus gave up the ghost he made sure that the last thing to be done was done in in uh, acts of apostle 21 number seven and when we had finished when we had finished our course from tire our project our our assignment we came to uh, Ptolema, ptolemaeus and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day we finished before we move so jesus christ is the author and the finisher of our faith and the bible says we should look to him whosoever that wants to finish well should look to jesus if we look to him the way he attempted the way he started the way he went on the way he was committed his lifestyle of prayer his lifestyle of study the bible say his manner was reading the word and daily jesus went to the mountain and and then and we come down every morning and then and we minister after that he will return to a place of meeting with god if we study jesus life like he said that we should should study him he said learn of me if we study his ways and study his lives his lifestyle his behavior and everything he did we will surely finish well according to hebrews 12 1 and 2 now the top thing that uh, there is the testimony of the of apostle paul is that he kept the faith and in keeping the faith he fought he contended for the faith he fought and contended for the faith he fought what's supposed to be fought now in jude 3 and 4 we are counseled to contend earnestly for the faith the faith is under contention there are powers there are forces there are activities there are forces left right and center the force of the world the force of uh, pentecostal pentecostalism the force of a uh, religion 
the force of the of uh, of, of uh, societal influence and so many things that are there they want us to give up the fake and then i will begin to follow follow the fake second uh, timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 second timothy can we read chapter uh, 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 2 verse 4 chapter 2 and verse 4 no man that worried entangled himself with the face of this life that he may please him who are choosing him to be a soldier no man that worried can you hear that Christian faith is like a war. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. That is uh, it. Chapter 4 and verse 7. I fought a good fight. I have uh, uh, finished my course and I have kept the faith. Can we read Jude uh, 3? Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Contend earnestly. Contend. Fight. The word contend is a military terminology. Battle. Fight. Which means we are fight to, to, to fight and we are faith to keep. There is fight to, to fight. There is battle to win and there is faith to keep. So the Christian faith has always been under a very strong dispute, very strong opposition, very strong attack. However, God has always raised men and women who fought for the preservation of the faith. And God wants you to fight and wants me to fight. He wants us to fight to keep the faith, to fight to preserve the faith. And that is why Christians are called the soldiers. That is why saints are, the, are called soldiers of the cross. Soldiers of the cross. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 18. Chapter 1 and verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Even Timothy, it was war. Christian faith was war in the days of Timothy. It was war in the days of the apostles. It was war even in the Old Testament to preserve godliness. Therefore, don't expect it to be anything less than war. Now, verse 19, holding forth and a good conscience, which some haven't put away, concerning faith have made shipwreck. And he mentioned two people, Hymenus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Can we read 2 Timothy chapter 2 further to confirm that the faith we have received is a faith that calls for fight. We are not talking about physical fight, going to carry gun or machets. We are talking about fight of faith. Fight of faith is not physical fight. It's a fight that is uh, done on our knees. That is why we must learn to pray. This is not the time to spend time talking and talking and talking about what is happening around and talking to yourself. It is time to spend talking to God. Now in 2 Timothy, I read from verse 1, chapter 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit unto thou unto faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, soldiers of the cross, soldiers of the cross. And then he said, be careful about entanglement. I remember uh, our early days in the movement, we were taught about entanglement. Now, those of us who sat under the, the teaching about entanglement, I want to ask you, have we not been entangled with so many things? And then and we, are left, uh, we are left empty. No man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Let it be clear to us that the war has not ended. The war has not ended. But it look at us, it looks like uh, we are now living as if there is no war anymore. But the war has not ended. 
Unfortunately, we are being fought, but the people that are being opposed and being fought do not know that they are being fought, do not know that they are being opposed. But God will help us to realize that the opposition is getting stiffer and stiffer. Opposition we are experiencing now is a more deadly than the one we received at the beginning. Now he said, no man that entangled worried, entangled himself with the face of this life, otherwise he will lose focus, he will lose balance, that he may please him who are choosing him to be a soldier. If any man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. And so let us, uh, let us learn how to return to the warfare again, and because the war has not ended. Now, being conscious uh, of um, of uh, our reward is important. If we need to keep the faith and fight the battle, we must be conscious that the battle is still on. The enemies have not withdrawn from war front. So if we withdraw, then the enemies will deal with us. And it looks like some of us are withdrawn, even though you say, I am still there. It looks like some of us have become entangled. Uh, the way what we are giving our major attention now is obvious. It's a witness. It's a it's a, it's a sign that uh, uh, there is a distraction. There is entanglement now. Entanglement. Entanglement remains entanglement. What God did not allow us to be entangled before when the ministry was starting. If we get entangled with them now, we are still entangled. Entanglement cannot be explained away. It remains entanglement. Therefore, if we want to keep the faith, we must be conscious of the battle. We must also be conscious of that, we, of that uh, there is a reward. If we keep the faith, it is important. It will influence our decisions. It will influence what we do. There is reward. Paul said, and that uh, henceforth, verse four, verse eight of uh, uh, of uh, Second Timothy chapter four. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also unto them also that love His uh, appearing. He said, "There is a crown of righteousness." Now, in Hebrew two verse twelve, verse two, Jesus Christ for the the, the, the crown that was set before him, he endured the cross. The crown was set before him. And so that led to enduring the cross. And then in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 10, 13 to 16, the people that have gone before us, they, they remain focused. Eternity was their focus. The city whose maker uh, is God was in, in view. They kept it in view. And that controlled them. Caleb and Joshua were controlled by their view, by their desire to put their step into the land of Canaan. And that made them to endure. That made them to avoid joining the multitude of unbelievers and the multitudes of, uh, of gainsayers and the multitude of doubters and multitudes who can cry and complain and murmur because of food. So we must be ready to confront whatsoever and contend with the powers that are contending and contend with subtlety of the devil that we can do through prayer and uh, if we do the lord god of heaven will surely bless us can we read micah chapter 6 verse 1 after that we will read Amos chapter 7 verse 4 and we will now come this morning to look into our lives to know whether we are still in the faith whether we are still holding the faith, whether we are still uh, in, in tune with the faith, or we are now dancing to the tune of things around us. In Micah chapter 6 verse 1, Hear ye now what the Lord said, Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. This is uh, the Lord calling the people for to contend. And the contending here is not to take take a bow and arrow the let the hills hear your voice means contend in prayer contend on your knees contend in supplication contend in intercession that is what god is uh, uh, called micah and the people to contend in the day of controversy with israel 
in, in Amos chapter 7, can we read verse 4? Thus says the Lord God, show unto me. Thus had the Lord, rather, God showed unto me. And behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. And he devoured the great deep and did it up a patch, contained by the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, I want you to come before the Lord, having had this uh, exhortation about keeping the faith. The question that naturally will be rising in your heart is, where am I in this matter of keeping the faith? Or has the faith slipped off your hand? Can we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. We appreciate your mercy. Morning by morning, we see your mercy. And this morning, we have seen the mercy of God. Our ears have heard. It is because of the mercy of God that has made him to open our eyes to show us what uh, the faith is all about. And then, and the need to contend for the faith. And the testimony of those who contended for the faith. They were prepared and they were ready to die for their conviction. My Father and my God, you have shown us that uh, we can, that, and they were prepared and ready to finish. They, from the outset, from the beginning, they set their eyes on the finishing point and therefore refuse distractions. Everlasting Father, you've counseled us that uh, or spoken to us this morning that we should sit down and count what it will cost us in order to finish. Otherwise, we will start and we have already started. So therefore, Lord in glory, it is not a question of whether we will finish because now if any man stopped halfway, the Spirit of the Lord does not have anything to do with a person who stopped halfway and whosoever that will lay his hands on the plow and look at behind is not worthy of the kingdom, is not worthy of heaven, is not worthy of eternity. Therefore, Father, this morning, the challenge is before us. And we're asking for the grace of God and for the mercy of God and for the strength that only God can supply. Dear Father, we ask you this morning, supply us grace and strength, O oh God, in, and wisdom in order to, to, to look at our lives and assess ourselves properly, to know whether we are still in the faith. Now, somebody has to be in the faith before you talk about keeping the faith. Somebody has to be in the faith before you talk about preserving the faith. Somebody has to be in the faith before you talk about the person fighting for the faith or contending for the faith. The man who is out of the faith, the man who is out of the faith, grandfather, cannot contend for the faith. Rather, he will destroy the faith. That is why we see so many people that are turned to be destroyers of faith. They are called to keep. And Apostle Paul said, if I destroy what I am called to build, then I am a sinner. Father, unfortunately, there are so many people by their ways of life, by their language, by their attitude, great father, attitude that people cannot learn any good thing from. They are destroying what they are purported to be building. Father, I ask that you save us from such calamitous life. Save us from such kind of life. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you. We commit this day. We commit the truth we have had. Asking the Spirit of the living God, write this truth at the table of our heart. And let the, this truth be the driving force that will drive us to death as we go out. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask God for grace and for support and for strength to keep the faith because there are many uh, who are in the church but they have lost the faith of their fathers. They have lost the faith of Christ. They are out of faith. So we're going to ask for grace. Those of us that, already, that are still in the faith, grace to remain in the faith. Those who have moved out from the faith, grace and wisdom to return to the faith and then and to maintain the faith of Jesus, the faith of the fathers. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord in glory, uh, we are asking you for grace, we are asking you for support, we are asking you for strength, and we are asking you for wisdom and the uh, designing spirit and uh, uh, honesty to be able to have uh, 
honest assessment of our life, our life's honest assessment of our faith and of our present conviction about the written word of God and the way we're handling it. Our present conviction about the faith that was one delivered unto the saints. Have we begin to negotiate the faith? Have we begin to compromise the faith? Have we started to, to look at the faith and uh, see as if we can do some revision? Some revision concerning the faith? Or if we can do some editing? Have we started editing the faith of the fathers and the faith of Christ and subjecting it to study and to thorough and to discussion? My Father and my God, I pray, Lord, in glory, that you will help every one of us so that uh, we will not lose the faith to religion. We will not lose the faith of the fathers and faith of Christ and our belief and our conviction my father to things around us thank you almighty father we are trusting that the lord god will help us in the name of jesus amen enoch and noah joshua and caleb and joseph and paul even our lord jesus and others even some kings in israel did well and they finished well they slept with their fathers they slept with god and uh, and uh, somebody like Enoch, the Bible says, he walked with God and 365 uh, years and there was not because he pleased God. God took him. Now the testimony of concerning Noah and uh, Enoch and Joshua and Caleb and Joshua and uh, Joseph and Paul and uh, even others is that they did well, they finished well. They finish well so we're going to ask God for grace to finish well grace to finish well grace to walk with God daily like he knock he knock one with God 365 years only what we're asking is one day at a time let us pray father this morning we come to ask for grace for today we want to ask for strength for today want to ask for compassion for today want to ask lord for bread for today bread of life and we want to ask for light for today oh god you helped enoch enoch did not do it because he was a superman noah joshua and caleb and joseph and paul and the rest of the people that were able to finish their relationship with god with testimony and then and finish the assignment their call their commitment the project of god in their hand with the testimony they didn't do it because they are too powerful and they are too special and they are too uh, superman no they finish it because of the grace of god therefore this morning the grace that was available for enoch Father, I request for such grace upon my life, upon my children, upon my wife, upon the children of the pastors working with me, upon all our daddies and upon our mommies, upon all the Dalsician pastors. Great Father, every one of us this morning I come asking the Almighty Father that the grace that he knock enjoyed, the grace that Noah enjoyed, the grace that Joshua and Caleb and Joseph and Apostle Paul and even our Lord Jesus Christ and those who have kept this faith, we want to receive this grace because our call is a call to keep the faith. Our call is a call to confront the bulwark of the devil. Our call is a call to confront darkness. Our call is a call to keep the faith. Therefore, Lord in glory, the grace that is necessary, we need. We can't do it on our own. Nobody has ever done it on his own. So this morning, we receive grace for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Samson, Saul, and Demas uh, couldn't finish their, the, 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 the work that God gave them. They couldn't finish well. Rather, the, the grace finished. They couldn't, they couldn't finish with the strength God gave them. Rather, they finished the strength. That is what happened to them. They couldn't finish their divine assignment. I want us to pray that those things that finished Samson, Samson was finished by Delilah. Saul was finished by self-will. Demas was finished by the things of this life. And many others equally 
things that finish them have to do with this life. I want us to pray that God Almighty will give us grace to be mindful of these things that finished men who have done well. Now the man of God from Judah was finished by food. Food finished him. His appetite finished him. Can we pray? Our God and our Father. The Bible has lists of people who couldn't finish well, but ended in shame. Saul, Samson, Demas. I do not want to be in the number that didn't finish well. I pray that nobody in my family, nobody among these men and women that you have given us to run this race with, you have given us to teach uh, pastors, Lord in glory, district pastors, and their families, and then parish pastors, workers, and every person, Father, that has come under the auspices of the watchman at our command here, Lord, in the diocese, and other places where the watchman people are. Great Father, I pray that you give us grace to avoid those things that finished people. Solomon was finished by women. There are times that finish men and disgrace men, my father, and put them to open shame, my father, and disgrace them publicly. Father, Paul warned Timothy, say, be careful. Love of money, many have pursued it and pierced themselves and wounded themselves, Lord. Those things that have wounded men in battle, that wounded soldiers, those things that you consider that entanglement, blessed father, whether they be some things that appear well, whether they be some things, but you know that those things have endangered us spiritually. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will point them out and give us grace to avoid them. In the name of Jesus, thank you Almighty Father because we are trusting in the mercy of God and in the help of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. There are many things contending against the faith of our youths. The faith the youths having faith in the faith of their fathers. And, um, and uh, we're going to pray that the Lord God Almighty will help these our youths to uh, begin to take the truth. Many things are contending against the truth that, uh, uh, that we're delivering. Truth that our Father in the Lord is delivering uh, uh, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Sunday. And the ones that uh, our pastors are delivering to the people even at, uh, at the workers meeting and name it and even Bible discourse and house fellowship and all that. There are so many things contending against this truth. But this morning we want to lift up our voices and ask the Lord to make us, make our youth soldiers that are very resilient. As soldiers of Christ, soldiers of the cross that will stand against the, of the activities of the enemy, let us pray. Father, we come this morning. We need the spirit of the soldiers of the cross, the kind of grace that came upon Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that they dared Nebuchadnezzar, the kind of a resilient spirit that came upon Daniel and came upon Joseph and came upon Mordecai and Esther, and those who have done this kind of work we're doing now, even the kind of grace that Nehemiah enjoyed, my father, that made him to to stand, made them to stand and to contend for the faith and made them to represent the faith in a strange land and will not compromise. Father, this morning I request that such spirit and such grace be released into our youth, into our children, my Father and my God. There is this thing that, is, uh, that has been very common with children of the ministers, Father in heaven. Now, Lord, you find that this thing, the, the, the sons of Eli, they didn't pay attention to what their parents were saying. And even children of Samuel, great father in heaven, we pray that such spirit will not be able to come and they will not be able to uh, get our children entangled in the name of Jesus. Rather, the grace that rested upon Samuel, my father and my God, that he grew in the midst of corruption. He grew in the midst of evil, but he refused those evil from influencing him. Father, release upon our children, release upon our youth, release upon the children of the pastors, Father, beginning from our daddy's children to all the daddies, all the daddies, and everyone, Lord, that have been very, very committed to this vision and to the race, Father, the same spirit that came upon Samuel released, and the spirit that came upon Joseph and Timothy, and all of these youths that kept the faith, Father, let it come upon them, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Apostle Paul spoke of uh, many adversaries uh, 
uh, uh, because of the open door. And Jesus said, it will come to pass when people kill us, kill Christians, it will do, look as if they are doing service to God. And uh, we are experiencing such thing. We are going to pray that God Almighty will continue to protect His people, the church, in these days. We are also going to pray for our daddy in the Lord, our Jesus and his family, and also God to continue to protect him and to preserve him so that they can keep us, so that the truth is teaching us can keep us and preserve us. And then let us also ask God that uh, today he should take us out and bring us back. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. The things that are written in the Bible, they are no longer just a time to come. They are no longer a prediction. We are witnessing it today. That many people are taking pleasure in killing people because they call them, they, they are answering Christians. My father, killing men and women that didn't do them anything. But father, we commit these killers into your hand. You know what you will do them. You say that the land is polluted by blood. And by the blood of the men who polluted the land, will the land be cleansed. Father, you say that he that killeth with sword will also be killed with sword. And that vengeance belongs to God. Father, this morning, oh God, religion is not by force. My Father and my God. Somebody should be able to decide who he will serve and not by force. It should be by conviction and not by conquering, not by killing. Therefore, blessed Father, every form of jihad, my Father, against Christian faith, every form of the wickedness that the devils, my Father, have perpetrated in the places of darkness, we come against them in the name of Jesus. No weapon form that shall prosper. Every thought against the faith, against anybody, because he's Christian. Father, I want to ask the Lord to take vengeance in the name of Jesus. Father, we bring our daddy this morning and his family and all the daddies into you and asking you, give them protection and give them, uh, uh, preserve them in the faith. Father, we commit our day into your hand. Make the day good for us. With God, Lord, with us, we shall pass through uh, the darkness and then we shall have light. David said, I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I fear no evil for you are with me. Father, we are trusting to death. We shall walk through the darkness. We shall have light. Father, we shall walk through the wilderness and we shall have water. With Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. We shall experience happiness all around. Today, to the glory of God Almighty and to the shame of the devil. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, excellent spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Now we take this and we will uh, call it a day. Hymn 245. 245. Can we take it? Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call over, for to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. He that amen now serve him against on no but fool let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit abide with us now and forevermore 
Amen. Good morning and God bless you.